Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a $48 Uncommon from Code Snap. This card has just gone straight up in price. It reminds me a lot of Gitaxian Probe in that a lot most decks can play it if they want it. Um, it's an artifact, so you don't need to worry about you know being in a particular color. It's very good in Def Zoo, which is one of the decks I currently have made. I also have Valia Zoo made, and this one I put in. The, it's just a good filler card. If you instead of running 60 cards, you want to run 56. This is a card for you. It also does help with artifact count. It helps with storm count if you're playing that. And it helps with putting st stuff on your graveyard for delve. So it's a very flexible card. But right now it's only seeing play at on a tier 1 modern level in Def Zoo. So what makes a 50 cent card go all the way up to $48? Supply on this is extremely low. A few speculators can spike the price hard, and that's what's happening here. It's not there's not that many of them. Coach Snap was not a popular set. Uh, Coach Snap was not a valuable set until recently. Now I believe maybe, but at the same time, you never crack a box looking for a playset of these for value, unless you had a YouTube channel and you wanted views and you were going to make money that way. Because you never get the value of a sealed box back. As soon as you open the, the seal, you just lose hundreds of dollars depending on a box. So, let's talk about this card, where the future it would be, and how I see it moving on. Now, if you have Def Zoo, or I have a version of Def Zoo, you should have this card. So, you, you are okay. If you need this card... I would trade for it, but not buy it. I definitely would not buy this card at the current price. I do feel like eventually it will die down due to the hype, and people will find more supply of it. When the card hits $48, trust me, there are people right now looking through their code snap bulk to see if they have it, and maybe they do. Maybe some of them do. So very interesting card. I do want to take this time to say that the philosophy of a lot of players reading the comments is completely incorrect in my opinion. You you buy magic cards to play them. So when people are saying, oh, I sold all my magic cards in 2015 before this happened because I saw it coming, I A, don't believe that, and B, so you didn't play modern for a year. I'd much rather play modern for a year with my friends and take a hit on the cards because that's the utility of the cards. The utility of cards are not to put them in a binder and not to sell them a year so you cannot play modern. That sucks, right? I want to play modern. I do love the format. I did. I do want it to be successful moving on, but the concept that, oh, you know, I'm so smart. I sold my cards in 2015. I sold all my cards in 2015. It's like, so you didn't play Magic at modern level? Like, I make enough money, I live a good enough life that I can take a hit on my collection if that means I get to play with more people. I'm 100% happy about that. At the same time, I've enjoyed my decks for an entire year that you supposedly didn't have a deck in Modern, and I've been able to play with my friends. I've been able to have so many experiences. When you compare this to... Any other hobby, like I compared to golf, I'm a member of my golf club. I'm terrible at golf, but the money I've spent on golf is never going to be recuperated because, but I have a good time. The money I spent on going to Galveston or going to the Texas State Fair or the rodeo, those are experiences. And I never, I'm like, oh no, I didn't, I, I didn't make my money back from going to Texas Road. No one says that, but in magic, people say that. And it, it you know, it drives me crazy because you can do anything else to make more money than you can do doing magic pretty much. You can work at Walmart, you can work at Subways, you can do anything and it would be A, more stable and B. So when I look at magic, I look at from an enjoyment standpoint, I can afford magic, I can afford these cards, so I'm very fortunate and I can do that. Therefore, I just want more people to play with because that's the entire point of Magic the Gathering. It's not... 
it's it, it's insanity to say, oh, I'm awesome because I sold all my magic cards before this happened. So you didn't play modern format like before then? You didn't play for the entire 2015? You didn't play for the entire 2016? That to me is not worth taking a hit. Yes, I know I'm going to take a hit, but I enjoyed 2015. I enjoyed 2016 playing with my friends, playing with um, at locals, letting people borrow my decks. It's to me like I'm a developer. Logically, it doesn't make sense that you would take pride in that you sold your collection in 2015, 2016, and because you don't have utility of it. You're not using it. It's like using a laptop. Oh, cool, I sold my laptop in 2015 and I didn't have a laptop. Yeah, you don't need a laptop, you don't need internet, but life would suck, right? That's how I feel about modern. I don't need modern decks, but I've been able to enjoy them in 2015, I've been able to enjoy them in 2016, I don't know what else to say. That's my personal opinion. Anyways, bye guys.